Would you like to know how to make a dye from a cup of blueberries, skin of one pomegranate, and a few ingredients from your kitchen cabinet? Hello everyone, it's Dragana from Sasebo. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited about today's video. I'm going to be showing you how to make dye from blueberries and pomegranate. The first part of the video is going to be about how to make the dye and how to mix those two with other ingredients to get different shades. The second part of the video, we are actually dyeing some papers. We're also trying to use those dyes as watercolors and I'm going to quickly show you a signature that I put together. So stay tuned if you'd like to see how it's done. Let's make some yellow dye first. This is a pomegranate. That's what it looks like. It's a fruit. It grows in Mediterranean climate and it's in season at the moment and it's really tasty. For the dye we don't need the edible part, we actually need the part that we're gonna throw away anyway so it's a bit of recycling there. So you basically when you decide you want to eat it you open it up like this. Maybe there's a better way but <laughs> doing it like this okay. do little incisions just to start it okay and put these sections out look at that it's beautiful yummy let's taste one mm, really sweet so what you do, you take all these red bits, red seeds, put them in a separate uh, container and eat them. They're really uh, nutritious and delicious. And you keep the, the yellow parts, this skin and, and this here to make your dye. So I'm not going to do it now in front of the camera. I prepared one earlier. That's it. That's one pomegranate, the seeds, and that's the parts that we were going to throw away okay so it fits in a small saucepan you only need one basically it, you'll see the pigment is really strong i have a half a liter of water which is two cups of water in here let's see if i need all of it or just yeah just want to cover this basically okay that's enough so one pomegranate and two cups of plain tap water you put it on your stove you turn the heat to maximum. Once it boils, you reduce the heat a little bit and you let it simmer for about 15 minutes. And in the meantime, you can enjoy your fruit. <laughs> I'll be back. It's boiling. I'll reduce the heat and simmer it for about 15 minutes. It's been 10 minutes. I think it's looking good. Let's just test it with a piece of paper. Look at that. It's already yellow. Yeah. But I will let it simmer for another five minutes. I think it's okay now. It's all soft. Liquid is a bit darker yellow. Look. This will stain your fingers. I'm going to turn the heat off and leave it until it cools down. This has cooled down and we're going to strain this liquid. I have a glass container here, just a jar, and this plastic thing. And because these holes are a little bit too big, I don't have one with the smaller one, so I'm just going to use some gauze. Okay, and I'm going to strain this. Yeah. It has become a little bit kind of gooey. So I hope you can see this. I'm just gently pressing to squeeze as much of the juice as I can. That's probably enough. Okay. So here is our yellow dye. Now let's make some blue dye. And to make the blue dye, I'm going to use frozen blueberries. I don't have any fresh ones, but I think frozen ones would work just as well. 
and I'm going to use about one cup. Ooh, very nice. So just one cup of blueberries and two cups of water. I'll turn the heat on to maximum, wait till it boils and then again I will simmer for about 15 minutes the same way as I did with the yellow dye when I used pomegranate skin. I think this has been cooking for enough, 15 minutes is okay, let's just check the color. Wow, beautiful color. It's purple at the moment, but we'll see if it's going to stay like that. Okay, I am going to turn the heat off completely and I'm going to wait for this to cool down and then I'll strain it. Okay, our blueberry dye is now cool and I'm going to strain this into another jar. Same way. I love how rich this color is. Just squishing it a little bit to get as much of the juice as I can. I wonder what I can do with this um, waste. Um, is it usable? Can I make a like, jam with it? Or is it not good for eating? I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below. <laughs> it's probably enough. Just go with it like this. I should put the gloves on. Maybe I should. That's probably enough. This is how you make blueberry dye. This is how I make iron mordant. I take a glass container that has a lid, something that can close, and I collected these. You know, sometimes when you garden or when you go into the garage, there's always some nails and bolts, and they're kind of really looking old they're not going to be used anywhere else but they're perfect for making iron mordant okay i have some plain tap water here and i have white vinegar just white vinegar okay and this is how i do it i take one part water and one part vinegar it doesn't really matter if you want to make a lot of it you'll take a big cup this is just a small cup i'm not going to make a lot because i already have some but i just wanted to show you so take your rusty bits i mean if you don't have them that are rusty you can put the, the new ones they're going to rust anyway uh, you know, just get some nails and leave them outside for a few days in a rainy day and they will become rusty i'm sure anyway that's what you do, you just put that in the jar and then you take your vinegar and you pour in your measuring cup, whichever one you're using, but you need to have enough of this liquid to cover the nails. So if you have a lot of these, you will obviously need a bigger measuring cup. Okay, and then you get one cup of water and that's all it takes. Okay, close the lid and you stir it up. Now, if the nails are not already rusty, this might take up to a week to create iron mordant. Sometimes it happens within two or three days. You will know it's ready once it changes color. It will become orangey, uh, rusty brown. So you can always test it. Just take a strip of paper, put it inside, take it out. If it's colored, then it's ready to be used in your natural dyeing methods. Once it's ready, you have two options. You can strain the liquid into a separate container 
and add more vinegar and more water into this one again to create more or you can leave it inside and if you're going to use it within maybe a month it's fine if it stays as it is one thing i'm going to do is i'm going to put a little label on top just so that i don't forget i'm going to put the date and today is it's 20th of february that's for my reference so i know how long it's been sitting in there we made ourselves some dyes so let's mix them up and see what sort of colors we can achieve if we mix those two and we add some basic ingredients that you might find in your kitchen cupboard okay this is our iron mordant it's been two days so i'm filming this two days later and uh, yeah the rest started to form but it's not ready yet so i'm just going to use the one that i had made earlier and this is what it's supposed to look like so i hope you see the difference so this is iron modern that's ready to be used this still needs to sit in this water vinegar solution probably a few more days i put myself some test strips here and i wrote down what i want to show you because uh, you may certainly use just yellow and blue as it is dilute with water make it lighter if you prefer that that's totally fine and you can mix those two to get another color that's fine as well but i just want to show you since we're making these i want to show you how you can take that one step further and have yourself not just two colors you can have 10 colors and you know you can do all sorts of things with these and later on in the video I'm going to show you what you can do and how you can use these to make really beautiful papers. I've sort of put everything that's pomegranate on this side and this is blueberries. And the last two will be mix of those two. I'm going to add a little bit to each container. I'm using these. I found them really cheap in a shop that sells school supplies. You can use any plastic cups. Okay, and I'm going to pour pomegranate here. This is really concentrated, so the colors will be really uh, saturated and strong. So, of course, by adding water, you dilute the amount of pigment or dye and you get lighter result. So now we are supposed to add sodium bicarbonate to the first two. I'm just going to use a pinch now you can experiment with this you can add more or you can add less it will give you a slightly different result but these are small amounts so i'm just using a pinch it says you just a pinch it's all about experimenting and trying out so i'll just start by adding one of these small ones and then i'll test it and see what's going to happen Ooh, you see it just reacted this one reacted here nothing really happened so i suppose i need to add more you want some sort of reaction there So I had added three of these to this amount and now I can see it's starting to kind of form a little bit so I suspect it's probably enough. And then we wait for this to settle down. Okay. Now uh, we're supposed to add iron mordant into these two. So I'm just going to use this one and I'm going to use this because it's just easier. So it's probably the same amount as here, but I don't want to get this wet. Okay. And you'll see once I add it in here, it will be really dramatic change. Look, it became really dark. And... 
and then I'm going to mix it. Look at that beautiful brown color. Love it. It says here pomegranate and sodium bicarbonate with a drop of iron mordant. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to add one and I'm going to mix it. And then I'm going to wait for it to, for the bubbles to, you know, go down. And now here in this one with the blueberries, I want to add a little bit of vinegar. So here we have one teaspoon, but I will, I don't know, I suppose one teaspoon. Let's, let's see what's that going to do. I tried adding uh, vinegar to the pomegranate and barely any change. Nothing really happened. So I'm not going to bother, but it did have a bit of an effect on the blueberry. To settle down. Okay, now here we have pomegranate and the blueberry three to one so it's three parts of pomegranate and one part of blueberry so i'm just doing this by eye you know i'm not really measuring but you can if you want and then here it says one to one so it's one part pomegranate one part blueberries half half so i'm just going to put half of this and half of that I think I could have put a bit more here. I don't know. Maybe I should have measured, but I didn't. So, yeah. And this one is really weird. It looks reddish purplish now. Can you see? But as it dries, it's magic. It turns green. <laughs> I love it. That's only this one that needs to settle down. This one has done its thing. Okay, let's start with the testing strip. So we'll dip that one there. Pull it out. Nice. It's a really nice color. This one looks purple, but I don't think it's going to stay like that. But we'll see. The one with the vinegar. And the mixture of pomegranate and blueberries. See how these do look similar? But as they dry, they're not going to stay the same. <laughs> this is so amazing to me. Okay, let's see what this does to that one. Okay, still very yellow. This one. bit here. Lovely brown. We haven't finished this one yet, so we have to wait till it settles down a bit. We said we need to put a drop of iron mordant in here. I think it's safe to put some now. So just a drop. Yeah, let's see if that's enough. Then we can re-examine. Because we want brown, but not as dark as that one. Can you see the colors are starting to change already? Okay. Let's dip it. It's just a lot of foam still up. Off. like that and now we wait for them to dry and then assess all right our samples are now completely dry i actually left them overnight uh, to dry and i'm recording this the following day because i simply wanted to give these samples some time 
to dry completely and change the color if they're going to change it they would have changed it in within 24 hours so that we can take a better look so i'm just going to put this aside so that we can see these a little bit better aren't they just gorgeous uh the blues up and the greens are just so so nice and i'm very happy with them and i have some of my uh papers and samples that I've done last week when I was trying out this for myself I just want to quickly compare these to the ones that I've done earlier I can see that this one turned out a little bit darker than the first time I've done it so I think I probably put a little bit more uh, sodium bicarbonate than I did when I was doing this one so that's why it turned out a little bit different this one seems to be right and this one as well okay and the green one look at that i think i probably put a bit more pomegranate than i did the first time around because this is more like a yellowish um, green than this one here and i absolutely love it so i did say three to one but i didn't measure so when you mix these colors just Use your own judgment. Just experiment. See what it looks like with more, what it looks like with less. And, you know, make up your own uh, color or shade. This one obviously turned a little bit darker. So I guess either my uh, blue or blueberry dye was a bit stronger than this one. It's possible or just, you know, because I'm not measuring. You never know with these colors how they're going to turn out. And your results might, again, be a slightly different it will depend of the tap water that you use. It will depend of the blueberries or the pomegranate. So what I love about this is there's always that bit of a mystery. You never know what you're going to get. So the blueberry here, yeah, it's again, this a little bit darker than this one. Maybe my dye was a little bit more saturated or I used a bit less water than I did the first time around. I don't know. But that's what happens when you... Um, use these uh, types of uh, dyes and I, I love them anyway this one also turned up a little bit darker so i guess i either use more blueberries or i use less water or maybe i cooked it a bit longer so my dye was a little bit more saturated but that's fine so i'm just showing you um, all the differences now this one is probably the same this one as well yep as you can see here on these examples i've covered the whole page just to see better what the color is going to look like and these are probably a bit dark for just regular pages in the journal so if i was to do a lot of these i would probably add a little bit more water just plain water into my um, dice to have a little bit less saturated color this is totally up to you but what i love to do with these saturated paints is do some watercolors and i'll show you a few that i've done later on let's have some fun with these beautiful colors that we created and i want to show you how i dye my papers and what you can do to make them really special stay tuned the best part is coming up before we start if you're new to junk journaling and never dyed papers before with uh, natural dyes I just want to show you a short clip of how I set up my space for drying paper. This is how I set up my paper drying area because I have very limited space and I have lots of pets. can't really leave them anywhere else in the house but my studio because I keep it closed at all times. So I put something white underneath because my carpet is really dark and then I put this plastic. Okay, it was a big bag, plastic bag that I um, cut open and spread it. It's thick, the liquid won't go through, but I have the white underneath so I can see better what's going on. When it's dark, it's kind of difficult. Okay, and I'll be laying flat my papers here. And I usually do this and I do the other stuff around the house. And when I come back, it's dry and I pick them up. And it's so easy to clean up afterwards. You just take a, a wet cloth and wipe it clean. So when I work with natural dyes, I prepare area where I'm going to dry the papers, but I also prepare my desk for dyeing. If you've already done this, you might have your own system. If it works for you, that's fine. 
I'm doing just what works for me. And also, as an example, if you've never done it before, how you can see how it can be done. So I put some plastic on my desk. I have a piece of vinyl here. You can use a plastic bag, open it up and spread it around because it's a, it's a messy job. It's a lot of fun, but it does get messy. These pigments can stain your clothes, so you don't want to damage your nice blouse, for example. Just wear something that you wear when you do work in the garden, perhaps, or paint the house, I don't know, whatever. And uh, get yourself some brushes. If you have just one, then prepare some water as well so that you can clean it in between. Otherwise, your dye is going to end up messy. You know, you, you can't dip in one color and then in the other with the same brush. You're, colors will change then okay i have some clean water as well just nearby just in case you need to uh, dilute some of these dyes if the colors are too strong uh, if you have like a normal brush and these ones are just cheap brushes that i get in hardware store you know like they're just like a dollar or something really really cheap you don't need anything special or fancy get yourself some paper i'm just using copy paper regular copy paper also we'll do one at the time and in between you need like an old cloth so that you can wipe any mess that you make i just want to walk you through several ways of dyeing papers you have that other option where you make your dye put it in a tray put all the papers in tray take them all out let them dry and that's fine this is slightly different i sometimes like to do it this way i keep these uh, handy because these dyes don't look the same here as they look <laughs> over here i'll just take these out first i want to show you how i do more than one paper at the same time so if i want to say do five or ten sheets of paper in this color this is how i would do it i grab my paper take a brush just dab it down so it's not too wet and I spread the paint okay so that's that's it then I take another sheet of paper put it on top and again so this is if you want to have several sheets of the same color you know So you can choose to leave it like that and just keep going or if you want to have an even color on both sides without streaks like this i turn it again and place on top okay you see how it, there's not enough paint here so you just fix it and you keep going I usually don't go more than uh, 10 sheets at a time because then it takes longer to dry. So I'll just quickly spread the color. Let's just do one more. Like that. And then we're going to turn it around. I love watching this change colors so quickly from purple to green it's amazing isn't it? okay so you just get a, you know one color and these wrinkles are fine to me i don't i don't mind i actually like they might give me some interesting um, design and you can even finish it by dipping the brush in die and just doing this just for the fun of it another thing you can do is also get some water or a clean brush and then spread some water so you have areas that are not so dark later on okay and then i pick that up i would probably stack more of them and i'll take them like this and put them in my area for drying papers now I need to first clean my brush. I need to clean this. Ok, 
Okay, let's see what else we can do. Now I want to show you quickly how you can mix these colors to have really awesome papers. So pick two colors that work the same. For example, if you want to mix pomegranate with a yellow dye with uh, this one, the blueberries that has iron mordant, it is not going to work fine because when you add iron mordant to this, you end up with a really dark brown reaction happens that's what i'm uh, trying to say so choose the blue pigment that doesn't have iron mordant if you wish to have really nice shades of green and blue and yellow that's i just want to mention that with the blueberry it doesn't really matter because you can see here once you add iron mordant to blueberries it only becomes a little bit darker and more purpley it doesn't really do drastic change like it does here okay so Let's do, for example, one like that. Uh, which one should we do? Blueberries with vinegar. Let's do that one, blueberry vinegar. I'll just get a clean brush. So blueberries and vinegar, that's that one. Okay, okay which one should I do? I'll just grab the yellow dye, which is the one in here. So I'm going to dip my brush inside and just do this, just to get some interesting design. Nice. Now you can take another color and add to this. Let's, uh, for example, take this one. This is pomegranate with sodium, which is a bit darker yellow. I'm going to put this one to dry. So another way to mix these colors is to do like stripes. So let's say we'll start with this one. I'll just do stripes. And maybe here a little bit less, just so I use this paint. Or just use straight blueberries. Okay. And you put that there. Clean in between, because you might have picked up some of that yellow. Just like that. And then you do this. Let it drip, let them mix. And you can also take some clean water. You see where they mix it, they're already changing to green. Okay, let's put that one aside to dry. You can also mix like this. Let's say, I'll just add water just water the water is a little bit dirty from washing the brushes but as you can see no color there just water and then you take one of those uh, colors whichever one you want let's do the green one let's do just the plain yellow Let's do, for example, we haven't tried this one, blueberries with sodium carbonate. Let's do that one. Just I'm loving it. It's going to be really green. <laughs> Lovely shades of green. Yay. Okay. Again, you can leave it like this. Or you can twist it around, move it around, let colors create this marble pattern so because we added more water it's kind of easy to spread and then you finish it off with for example just blueberries this is so exciting for me uh, you know doing this sometimes it doesn't work i have to say sometimes you know end up with not so kind of good looking paper but no mention no gain <laughs> i want to show you something else Again, I'll just add some water. Let's use the blue one with the mordant. We haven't used that one. What would go well with that one? Let's use some of the dark one. We haven't used the dark pomegranate. Since we're doing the mordant, um, iron mordant, we might as well try this. Now you can hold your paper. Rub it and then hold like this. 
up the sides and just hold this for a second until you get that i love that effect sometimes it looks like um I don't know, like there's crystals or something, just the dark in the middle and uh, the, the way the paint kind of looks. So then you can add another line of, say, other color. Let's just get the plain yellow and do this thin one. And I'll just pick it up slowly and take it to dry. You can also do this. You can fold your paper you're going to use it in your journal why not fold it straight away and again i would just add a little bit of water first if your water gets really dirty you better change it because you might get some undesirable mixing happening which one we haven't used this one it changed the color a little bit What's really great about these uh, pigments is that you never get the same results, you know. So I spread that out a little bit because it was really dark. Now I want to add some of this blue. I'm going to add it just there on the sides. Like so. And maybe maybe I'll just have some of this. And then you pick up the sides and you close it like that. And you let it dry like this. Let's just do one with all of these colors. I just wanted to see what that would look like. I haven't tried it, but I want to try it now. And I'll start by just covering this with water. Now I will use a smaller brush and I'll start with the ones that don't have iron mordant. Okay, so I'll start with the plain blueberry and wash blueberry and sodium. Blueberries with vinegar. <gasps> this is amazing to me. It looks totally different now than it's going to look when it's dry. And now we have pomegranate with blueberries. Pomegranate with blueberry. Again, slightly different. Now I'm going to skip those two and I'm going to use this one. Let's have some plain pomegranate. Blueberry with iron mordant. Let's do now this one. This one has pomegranate, sodium, and a little bit of iron. But it is gone a bit dark, so I'll just maybe do it in the corners. And the last one is pomegranate with iron mordant. And this is kind of black, so I just have to do only a little bit. You can see it's very dark. Oh, done. Let's put it aside to dry. If you've been dyeing your papers with, say, coffee or tea, and you might have also used some stencils to create some different designs on your papers, you can do that with these colors as well. I'll use just blueberry, simply because this is a big brush and it's easier to dip it into this big jar <laughs> than into these small ones. I cover the paper with the dye, then I take the stencil, let's say this one, place it down, and then I go again over the stencil with the same color this is how i get a dyed paper with stencil these areas will get more color and hopefully the design is going to transfer and i let it dry like this with the stencil on top okay if you don't have any stencils and you want some sort of design you can also use bubble wrap just regular bubble wrap let's use this one okay. so i just take the bubble wrap and basically press it into the paper like this and I let it all dry together just like that 
I'll leave the bubble wrap on top while it's dry. One thing I've experimented with and I absolutely love the results is uh, dyeing my papers with stencils but in two different colors. I'll just use this one, blue breeze and sodium bicarbonate. So you start with one color, color your paper and then you take your stencil, put it over and then you use a different dye to the ones you used the first time around. So let's say maybe I can use pomegranate with sodium bicarbonate so I will just go over the areas where the stencil has this um, design and just spread like that so I'm going to let it dry like this with the stencil on top let's do one more like that I'll start with just water and now my water is getting a little bit dirty you see I will have to change it after this one and i'm adding water because i want to use this uh, pomegranate and iron more than i want to use this darker color so you see it's, it's kind of really it's almost like black now another thing is if if you leave this um out like this uncovered for a couple of days uh, they will become uh, darker because some of the water obviously evaporates and then especially the ones with the iron mordant they tend to get darker as days progress, especially if they're exposed to air. Using this one that I haven't cleaned. And I'm going to use different color on top again. I'll use this one. I find that this one is just really nice. So that is it. Okay. You want to know how you can dye your papers? With a beautiful pattern and have your fabrics dyed at the same time this is how you do it you take your paper put it down and pick the fabric that you want to dye for example i have this one so you do the same as you would do with the stencil cover the paper with color okay. take your fabric and then you either do the same color or you do different color and um, I'm thinking I'm thinking I might use I might just use the yellow I just spread it over that's how you do it and again, you leave it like that. Those of us who have been doing this for a while, we probably have our stash of fabrics in different colors. If you're just starting out and you want fabrics, I know I was like that. I wanted fabrics in different colors and designs and I just couldn't afford to buy 50 different fabrics all at once. But what you can do is get some plain fabrics that are just white and that also applies to lace lace can be expensive and it's best if you can buy just white and then color it using natural dyes i'll just show you quickly for example i have lots of these in just white and i don't really use white all that much and i can actually make them look really pretty and usable for my journals take a sheet of paper put it down i will start by just coloring this in blueberry Take your lace, put it there, and get more color over it. As if you're kind of gluing it to the paper. Maybe this one I can just drop inside. Squeeze the excess. And who knows, it might give us an interesting pattern. Same as this one, just drop it inside, squeeze the excess. For example, you don't have any lace, but you want to have some interesting ribbons. Just cut yourself some plain cotton. Let's put that one inside. I will spread it like this. And maybe I'll just fold it over here. I might dip this one into here. This way you get the papers with interesting patterns. And you also get your laces 
in beautiful colors i'll take this and let it dry like that one thing i love to um, use these dyes on is just the cheesecloth or gauze let's use this one let me squeeze the excess lovely green color and because this is bigger than the paper you can either have two sheets of paper one next to the other and just spread this or you can just fold it in half depending on the size of your material so i think mine is fits this paper if i fold it in half like that and sometimes it gives me faint pattern sometimes it gives me uh, more color depending of how saturated the this gauze is okay so you just leave it like that one thing i also like to do is if i have a fabric for example this one kind of like it but i really don't like this color so i'm going to try to change the color using i'll just use i'm going to use this one the blue one with iron mordant so i'm just going to spread over to see what's going to happen maybe it will turn blue maybe it won't i don't know <laughs> but nothing ventured nothing gained okay i just want to quickly show you remember how that was i tried earlier with this pomegranate with sodium and it's not bad i think i have one more spot left in my drying area so i'll just do some more laces i'll use this green color the paper has turned green already but uh, lace and the fabrics they stayed pink or purple <laughs> all right so that is it for that we'll let them dry completely and in the meantime i want to show you something else that you can do with these dyes and it's a lot of fun now while we're waiting for our papers to dry i just want to quickly show you something i'm not really a watercolor artist i never was i'm more like acrylic and oils but when i saw the way these look on the paper i was just so inspired to try obviously these dyes don't mix like the regular watercolors but you can still have a lot of fun with them and i just want to show you a few little things that i've done mostly uh, flowers and plants <sighs> Yeah, the spring is almost here, the willow. I played with some markers on top. I love this one, love how it turned out. Um, and this yellow one as well. Oh, and I love this one too. Yeah, and then I used some of the dyed papers and I drew this line work with a dip pen, this one. And I was just dipping in the darkest color here and I just uh, do that and I'll show you how to use that. I'll just put it there to remind myself not to forget. So I just had some fun and even these, uh, I think these would look good in a journal as a belly band or as a pocket. And these are also made with, with this on the paper. I think this one was, I used this color to dye the paper and then I drew with a darker color on top. I love how grungy they look. Yeah, this one I added a bit of white on top. Okay, so let's just do one quickly. I'm just using a sketch pad. It is 200 GSM. This is nothing fancy. It's not really a watercolor pad, it's a sketch pad. But the paper is thick and it works all right for me. You can use any paper that you have that can take um, water. Watercolor paper is fine if you have some use it i'm going to transfer this into here because it's easier for me to uh, use when it's in a smaller container since we're using blueberries i thought maybe i can do some blueberries and i'm going to use just a blueberry here i just love watching this change color and the element of surprise honestly i'm so thrilled with how these dyes turned out one of the reasons I uh, didn't do watercolors in the past is because I'm so used to going from dark to light, if you know what I mean. Like I would start with a darker color and then work my way towards the highlights. While in watercolors, you have to do the opposite. You have to start with the light and then build up layers to get the darker 
and <laughs> it just messes with my mind but i just love a watercolor look i'm just using some brushes that i bought online from aliexpress they're just i don't know they weren't that expensive this is just some loose watercolors i must say i'm starting to enjoy this i think i'm going to do this more often in the future because i honestly had a lot of fun and who says we can't have fun we don't have to be professional watercolor artists to have fun i'm so happy how these dyes turned out and all the fun that i had with just the skin of one pomegranate and a handful of blueberries i was able to get these colors and create these fun looking drawings that I scanned in and I created digital and I'll show you at the end. I haven't done that many digitals. I don't think I even have 30 or probably less than that. But this is probably the one that I love the most. I've started this on another piece of paper. Have a look here. This is once it dries. Maybe I can continue working on this one while that is drying. This has been my uh, playtime every night the last few days just having fun with watercolors well, i mean they're not watercolors they're just dyes but you can use them as watercolors and it's really interesting what what can inspire you like i have several sets of watercolors brand new never touched I buy them and just never use them and yet I make these dyes to color my pages for the journal and then all of a sudden I'm inspired to to do this <laughs> isn't it strange I love this so I just have to wait for this to dry and complete it probably wouldn't do much more to that I'll have to wait actually till it dries and maybe add some highlights with this um, white marker I've been using just to add a bit of white and I used some here these dots you can also use these inks with a dip pen just to create drones like you would use a marker or something like that so I, I like to use the darker color for that and yeah let's do some leaves simple things And I really love using this because um, it's almost like a calligraphy pen and it gives you really nice lines, thicker and thinner. And it's a great drawing tool. I always loved using it. Chestnut leaves. So basically you just use it as you would use your marker. Okay. so much fun and we can cut them out later glue them in our journals that's how you use these dies with a dip pen okay the papers have dried and i just want to quickly show you what they look like i think these are the first three that we've done that we stacked together and as you can see the, the color is really nice and smooth on those two and this one we uh, added a few drops of uh, other green this one turned out all right as well. There's a bit of yellow and, and I just love it. That's the green papers. Then we folded this one. Maybe I don't have them in the exact order because I honestly forgot what they would look like. Oh my God. I love this one. Even that it look, almost looks like a forest in the mist and there's a canyon or river in the middle. Doesn't it? I love it. Now this one's also very interesting. 
I really love the combination of this yellow ochre and, and blue. It just reminds me of the ocean for some reason. I really like this one as well. This one turned out also very nice. It has that brown and that like a cloud in the middle and the, the blue. And this is the one where we tried all of them. We added all of the colors in this one, I think. I like it. Uh, this one, I don't know, I'm not really happy with it. I would probably add more to it. I'll work with gesso and get it to work. This one's kind of nice. It has a bit of blue here, some lighter yellow and, and greenish. Uh, I, I love it. It looks really nice. Now this one, yeah, turned out really nice. I don't know where the yellow came from. Perhaps it was on this. It turned out really, really good. I love it. Okay. Wow, this is where we tried two different colors. I absolutely love it. So let's have a look at this one. Oh, that turned out really, really nice. Okay, let's have a look at that one. It seems to be stuck. Oh, look, design went through to the other side. I have to peel it slowly. It's because I didn't clean this stencil. It has a bit of gold acrylic paint on it. Something like this happens to you. Just try and do it slowly so you don't rip the paper. Do this part here. Yeah. Oh my god. Look what happened. It picked up some of that gold paint. Although it was dry, it was there for like almost a year. I didn't clean it in time and then it became too difficult to clean it but some of that gold transferred onto this and i absolutely love this one and look at the, the dark brown that we used it just became almost like wood and the yellow and a bit darker around and the gold <laughs> i love this one okay i'm excited about these Look at that. Different material, is it? Or did we use different ink? I think we used different ink. This one's gorgeous purple color. And this is just cotton muslin. This was from a blouse. And this one turned out blue. And <laughs> with a little bit of this. Maybe it seeped from there. I don't know. But it's really, really nice. I can make some ruffles with these fabrics. Use them. Beautiful color. So you see... You just get some white fabrics and use natural dyes that you can acquire without too much cost and you make yourself some interesting um, colors and beautiful fabrics. I love how this one turned out as well. Those two are really good. Now I have purple flowers. It's amazing how the color um, works different on the paper than on the fabric. But that's all fine works well oh this one look it's more purple here and it's more blue here so this is synthetic thread i assume and this is cotton so obviously cotton will go darker if you know what i mean so yeah we dyed the paper as well now the green ones let's peel that one oh i love that this one is so awesome look Again, this is green, but this stayed uh, more like purple or pink. I can't explain that, but it looks awesome. Perhaps if I rinse this in the water, it would lose some of the color. It would look paler, but I'm not going to rinse it because I'm going to be using these in my journals. And I don't know. I don't think anyone washes their journals in water. So I don't care if they're not color fast. Look at this one. Oh, this one turned out green. Beautiful. And this one is also like pink and green together. This one as well, it's green, but it has some pink. And this fabric obviously soaks dye really well. I love this. Oh, I'm going to do more of these. Uh, soon. And the paper looks cool as well. Okay, let's have a look at this. Oh, wow. It's really nice, pastel-y green, really beautiful color. And even the paper turned out really good. 
excited about. The transfer worked perfectly. I love this. I wanted to change the color of that one. I ended up with a blue paper and it did change the color. Uh, still not really happy with it, but you know, it did change the color. I want to use one of these pages now to complete the little signature that I started yesterday. I think this one would work really nice actually. blue and yellow together it's just so summery okay let's have a look that's going to be writing area i put that flower there with the word hope i dyed this lace with uh, pomegranate that's here is like a little tuck spot a belly band i used the drawing i love how this one turned out also a pocket here I left it as a pocket. I drew that with a dip pen, this as well. Ah, oh, this one says play, love it. Also drew with a dip pen and with the, these colors and with a bit of white. Another belly band. This one says grow. I love how the papers turned out. This one's a kind of really pale grayish green. And I absolutely love this one. Look at that. It's uh, like a belly band as well. It says Thrive. Oh, I love this flower so much. It turned out really, really good. Here we have another pocket. Then here we have a little corner pocket or a tuck spot. It says Daydream. This one says Nurture. I had a bit of that lace left, so I just put it there like a little decoration and I absolutely love these papers how they turn out this is that pomegranate with sodium bicarbonate it ends up really like warm yellow ochre color not as bright as if you just use pomegranate and this is with two colors and the stencil again this one says love here's a smile I also tried dyeing that lace in uh, blue but it turned out more like blue and purple at the same time and I absolutely love it I'm surprised it turned out so good and here it says listen and another one of those drawings and that is the end of my little signature and I just want to show you something else I could not resist sort of scanned in all of these watercolors drawings and some of the pages that I've done and I just could not resist but play a little bit to create like a digital and I absolutely love it my favorite so far and I hope you like it too I'll just show you quickly and I will also leave a slideshow of images at the end of the video so that you can see perhaps better than uh, if I'm flipping too fast you might not be able to see so there are pages with these flowers and there's also a matching page with nothing so like a background page I love how this one turned out that stencils turn out really good okay there's the background page and there's the one with my watercolor drawings in the corner so that would look, that would look awesome in the journal I think okay now I love this one as well um, yeah that's that drawing so that would look really nice in the journal too and there's the matching page for that one without the drawing just the background page 
I love how this one turned out on this paper. It just looks so good, I think. Yeah, love them. This one also, I, just, I love this one as well. I was thinking of calling it a spring floral, but not all of these flowers uh, flower in the spring, so it's just going to be floral. That's the background and that uh, page. And this one, this is definitely spring one. <laughs> and that's the matching page for that one. And I just love both of these. So there's like six decorative pages and six matching backgrounds. So that's 12. And then there's three more with these. I love how this one looks so like spring, so uh, kind of vibrant. I love it. It's a really nice background page. Now this one with these flowers, the smaller ones and the bigger ones and the music. I love this one too. And my absolute favorite is this one. I don't know. Love it. Okay, I'll leave the still images of these uh, digitals at the end. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you really enjoy this video. I've been filming it for a week, honestly, <laughs> doing this. This is the, the video that took me the longest. So thank you again for watching and I hope I see you soon in my next video. Bye for now.